This is Jaylin, my legal warrior, and today we have Nejma Brown, and she is joining us for our new series, No Lives Matter Unless. Nejma Brown combines strength, intelligence, confidence, femininity, and a healthy dose of creativity to succeed in the competitive fields of law and business. In her most recent position at El Dawani Law Firm in the state of Kuwait, Nejma was head of the international department where her primary practice areas were international business, transactions, agency and franchise, media and technology, and alternative dispute resolution. In addition to her international achievements, Nejma has had the pleasure of working with CBS, the Oprah Winfrey Network, Al Jazeera America, Zodiac Americas, and Dance On Incorporated. Nejma completed her bachelor's degree in public administration and a master's degree in negotiation, conflict resolution, and peace building at the California State University in Dominguez Hills. She earned her Juris Doctorate from Thomas Jefferson School of Law in San Diego, California, and is currently licensed to practice law by the State Bar of California. So thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you so much for having me. So yeah. great to see you. So great to see you too. And since this is a series essentially targeting, you know, the systematic racism that we are, you know, facing in this country and with the climate that exists today, my purpose is hoping to educate, inspire, and empower individuals out there by highlighting um, professionals from our community to showcase what they're doing to fight against systematic racism. And so my question to you is, is how are you using your business and or socioeconomic status to fight against systematic racism? Okay, that is a great question. I have a fully loaded answer. Um, first, I wanna start off by saying, what is systematic racism or systemic racism? Because a lot of people, as we can see on the internet, they're like, oh, I don't know what that means. And, I didn't know it even existed. So systemic racism is where you have laws, policies, and practices in place, usually uh, you know, enacted by different institutions. It can be government or a corporation, where on the face of these practices, they appear to be fair and equal, but when they are applied, they're usually oppressing a certain group of people. And as we've seen here in America, that group of people disproportionately tend to be Black Americans or Hispanic Americans. It may be um, different immigrant communities from um, Arabic-speaking countries. It just really depends on the setting. So once people can start to understand that systemic racism does exist, so a lot of it is education, right? So for me, I spend a lot of time, and I, I think I've spent my whole life <laughs> just just trying to educate people on my own experience as a, I, you know, I am a black Native American woman. So just sharing what I go through, what my family has gone through and what people that look like me go through because people are still like, oh, well, I don't believe it because when it doesn't happen to them or when they're not on the receiving end of the oppression, then you're just really oblivious. Because we also have to remember that in order for systemic racism to exist, there has to be people operating the machinery, right? So who are these people? Um, so there is a culture behind it. There is something in people's hearts that they inherently believe or they've been conditioned to believe that certain groups of people are not entitled to just basic human rights. And so when they believe that, then they're more than likely not going to fairly apply policies and procedures as they would to someone that looks like themselves, okay? So we have to really break down the culture and make a shift in that way. And how do we do it? To be honest, I don't have the magic answer. I've you know, seen people like Tim Wise and Jane Elliott who are considered anti-racist. And, um, you know, 
they they have these different theories on how to I, I, I would say brainwashed or convince uh let's say white Americans um to really have sympathy and compassion for the demographics in America that are suffering. But I don't always agree with that way. I feel like we need to make it very clear that we are fighting for humanity. And if we were all understanding that we're all human under this one umbrella and that we should love all the same, you know, like skin color does not think. Skin color does not make you more smart, less smart, um, entitled to anything other than anyone else, just based on your skin color, right? So we also need to work at removing this race system, this race competition. You know, being an international attorney and traveling all around the world, I have never been anywhere else in the world that focuses on race like in America. And that's what really holds us back. And I know for now, you know, we have to have these measures and measures of race in place, you know, if we're gonna try to eliminate, you know, some of the racial disparities. However, we need to continue pushing the narrative that we're all human and we should be loving each other. You know, stop segregating, because we even do it when it comes to gender. You know, everything's labeled and divided in our nation. It's like, no, just come together. I don't want to hear that, oh, this woman is going to make a better leader or that man is going to make a better leader. It's like, no, you take everyone as they are, as an individual. And I judge people based on the content of their character, which is what, you know, Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King was teaching us. And that's the way it should be. And that's why I say it's a fight for humanity. And we see it because even on social media, you have people from all different ethnic groups who have differing opinions. Some feel that there is no racism and there are no racial disparities. And then you have the ones who are like, wait, there are. And so my argument is you're either wrong or right. And to be perpetuating systemic racism, exhibiting uh, you know, harsh behavior towards someone just because of their, their look or their nationality, or their income level, that is inhumane, okay? So grow a heart, <laughs> build a heart. Um, so for me, I'm just always preaching to everyone around me. And although I am a commercial attorney, I've been spending a lot more time doing pro bono work in the criminal justice system because I know that's where people need it most. And we should not have our human rights violated, period. I definitely appreciate everything that you have been doing throughout your, you know, career. And like you said, you've traveled all around the world and you haven't faced what you're kind of facing now in the States and seeing what has been developing, uh, especially over the last several weeks. So yes. um, I did want to highlight your experience or your legal experience in Kuwait and my question to you is, how did that legal experience in Kuwait differ from your legal experience here in California? You know, I really appreciated my training and my experience in Kuwait because it's not as militant. You know, it's the, there's not a lot, as many laws, there's not as many regulations in Kuwait. It's not like we have here everything is regulated. You know, if you step outside on the sidewalk, you know, there's some regulation <laughs> surrounding that. And, and, and most of us don't even know what those regulations are. So I still like that people can live in a society where they don't have to be concerned about breaking so many laws and regulations. I do believe that people have the ability to govern themselves, right? But again, that goes back to the humanity part. So in Kuwait, they have a um, civil law uh, system. It is not a common law system like we have here. But I had an amazing time in Kuwait. And I will add that my experience abroad really allowed me to be reprogrammed because I was a person that always saw race, right? Because that's the way I've been programmed and conditioned in America, because race is the first thing. 
So even when a person talks to you over, over the phone, they're trying to find out not what you do for a living. The first thing is what is your race? What is your ethnic group? What, what race team do you belong to, right? Are you white or black? So in Kuwait, I could just be Najma. I could just be a human. I could just be myself. No one was ever inquiring about what race are you? You know, people do ask about your nationality, you know, where you originate from, because we're all, you know, most of us were expats. But other than that, it, I didn't have to worry about walking into a store and, one, and wondering, oh, is someone following me? Right? I didn't have to worry about the police pulling me over because of my skin complexion. I was just able to be free. Yeah. Oh, I like yeah. that you said that. That you were able to, to feel free and be free and it sounded like you also were felt safe uh, just yes. being and living in the community. I mean, as especially as a female in a Middle Eastern society, I think we all have our, you know, preconditioned notions on that generally as well. So I recall that you said that you um, are working on various projects now in uh, using your law degree and using your California license as well. And yes. so can you just go into a little bit of that so that our viewership could also get a hold of you and so I am trained on the transactional side I am a contracts master um, and that was the service that I was providing abroad a lot of um, contract review and drafting so now that I'm back in Los Angeles I have really made an effort to learn more of the litigation side and I have been providing pro bono services for criminal matters, because um, I know that's where people need it the most. That's where people are the most vulnerable and desperate. So, you know, I'm an open book. I have a lot of experience. I've done so many things. So, you know, people can Google me, and if they want to reach out to me, they can find me on Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, when you Google my name, Najma Brown. I'm like the only one in the world, I think. So um, it's really easy to find me. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you yeah. so much, Najma, for taking the time to share your experience and empower our viewership with everything that is you know, going on in the world and in your viewpoints on that and how you are effectuating a positive change. So again, thank you so much. And it's definitely a pleasure and honor to have you um, appear in our series. You're welcome. And thank you for having me. And I'm so proud of you. And I'm so grateful for what you're doing. And I'm, I pray that it makes an impact, but I know it will, because we're all a community and we're all doing our part to, to have the big impact together. So thank you.